green children of Woolpit. During the Middle Ages, two bizarre children, a brother and sister, spontaneously appeared in the village of Woolpit in rural Suffolk, England. At the time, the village belonged to the Abbey of Bury St. Edmunds and was one of the most densely populated areas in the countryside. The children's appearance was recorded contemporaneously by two writers, Rafe of Cockshall and William of Newburgh. The pair was reportedly found in a wolf pit used to trap wolves. It was in the summer, and they were wearing unfamiliar clothing, speaking an unknown language, and had green-hued skin. They were brought to the village, where both hid and refused to eat for several days, before they discovered and eagerly devoured a store of raw beans. The young boy was sickly and died, but the young girl slowly recovered, lost her green tinge, and learned to speak English. She was eventually able to communicate that she had come from a land of twilight called St. Martin, where the sun never shone, and everything was bathed in green. According to Rafe of Cockshall, the girl was subsequently employed by Richard de Calne as a household servant. In this position, she gained a reputation for, quote, impertinent wantonness. Yet William of Newburgh wrote that she married a man from King's Lynn later in life. Through family trees, astronomer and writer Duncan Lunan theorized that the girl married royal official Richard Barr and took the name Agnes. The young girl's arrival from the exotic land to England, however, remained an enigma. She could only recall tending to a herd of cattle with her brother before hearing a loud and sudden sound and suddenly finding herself trapped in a pit. The Man from Tarred In 1954, a strange Caucasian man supposedly arrived at Tokyo's Haneda Airport in possession of a never-before-seen passport. The man claimed to be from the country of Tarred, and became agitated when it became evident it did not exist. He pointed on a map to affirm his claim, but the region he pointed at was actually the Principality of Andorra. On the border between Spain and France, the country had been in that location for over a thousand years. He was baffled and had never heard of Andorra. He proceeded to argue with the officers, possibly thinking he was being tricked. Despite the arguments, he never accepted that Tored was not a country. Furthermore, he stated that he was on his third visit to Japan from Tored. Curiously, the passport of five years had stamps from Tokyo, even though Haneda had only opened to international flights in 1952. Even more impressively, he spoke fluent Japanese, although he was Caucasian and his self-reported mother tongue was French. His business documents proved to be invalid, but the passport appeared genuine. It had been stamped at airports around the world. The others were perplexed since Tarred wasn't real, but the passport seemed too well made to be a forgery. That the man spoke several languages, carried European currencies, and claimed Tarad had existed for centuries added to the mystery. He had allegedly been traveling around the world on business trips. When he shared the name of the company for which he worked, they confirmed its presence in Tokyo, but the company denied having any link to him or Tored. Furthermore, when he shared what hotel he'd be staying in in Tokyo, the hotel claimed not to have a booking. The perplexed officers decided to arrest him since they suspected his claims may be tied to some criminal interest. All his personal belongings, including the Tarad documents, were confiscated. They placed him in a nearby hotel. His room had two guards at the door and only one way to enter or exit. He was reportedly on a high floor with no balcony. While authorities investigated the man's assertions, he slipped out of the room where he was being held and disappeared. As for the confiscated documents, they vanished as well. While many have dismissed the account as an urban legend, others have firmly stated that the Tarad man did appear. Some theories as to how that happened have surfaced. The most notable and strangest of two prominent theories holds that Tarred is actually a country in a parallel dimension, and that somehow the man crossed a barrier between his and our world by accident. Another explanation suggests that he actually time-traveled from the future by accident, and that Andorra will eventually be replaced by Tarred. Utsurabune A number of Japanese sources recount the strange arrival of an attractive young woman in the sea near Hitachi in 1803. She was found by local fishermen in an ominous hollow boat made of metal plates with transparent crystal windows. The young woman was said to have pale white skin and bright red hair and estimated at around 18 to 20 years of age. She could not be understood when she spoke. In her possession was a small square box that she nervously clutched despite seeming otherwise friendly. Her story was narrated in three texts about 10 years apart each, in Toen Shoshetsu, Yoriyukishu, and Ume no Chiri. Her origin was never determined, as locals were so concerned by her peculiar craft and box that they cast her back out to sea. Ever since the account describing the woman became widely spread, 
Both Japanese and Russian historians have linked her to a possible Russian origin. The clothes and hairstyles described in all three accounts match Russian fashions at the time. The fact that she dusted her red hair with white powder has been particularly connected to Russia. Still, evidence of this theory may be purely coincidental. Most recent investigations into the subject have noted that a circular boat would actually be a common design in Japan, unlike in Western societies. Yet details such as glass windows and protective plates would be purely European. The tale has been adopted by several ufologists as early evidence of alien activity. They theorized that the vessel not only looked like a flying saucer, but that it was, in fact, an unidentified submarine object. In support of this claim, they've pointed out that the boat contains strange symbols, similar to those found in the Rendlesham Forest incident in the 1980s in England. Caves have also been found with similar symbols, leading some to suggest that the woman could have been extraterrestrial or a member of some long-lost civilization connected to aliens. Historians and ethnologists have long refuted or ignored these claims. Jofar Voren Appearing in the April 5, 1851 issue of the British journal Athenaeum was the story of a lost stranger calling himself Jofar Voren. He was reportedly found wandering disoriented in a small village in the district of Lebas near Frankfurt, Germany, having no idea how he arrived. No one else could see anything or identify anything on him that could point to a likely origin. Along with speaking broken German, the traveler spoke and wrote in unknown languages he called Laksarian and Abramian. Since no one could identify him or his origin, he was taken to the German authorities. The chief magistrate took on the interrogation. The man represented that he was from a country called Laksaria, in an area of the globe called Sakria, which was separated from Europe by a vast ocean. He stated that the world was divided into five great areas, or continents, identified as Sakria, Aflar, Astar, Oslar, and finally Uplar, possibly meaning Europe. Although he was Caucasian, a more definitive nationality could not be easily ascertained. Furthermore, he claimed that his Abramian language originated from the religious authority in Luxaria, which had promoted it as the standard language for the nation. Further questioning revealed that Abramian had Christian roots, and that the religion of Luxaria was a branch of Christianity called Ispatian. His purpose for traveling to Europe, he claimed, was to seek a long-lost brother. His last memory was of becoming shipwrecked somewhere along his voyage. An account of his arrival in Germany was featured in the 1852 edition of Yearbook of Facts in Science and Art, written by John Timms. The publication was acclaimed at the time for being accurate and well-researched, lending credence to the man's existence. Yet no one could explain why his concept of the globe's geography was as it was, nor could anyone explain why he spoke a linguistically accurate tongue. Some worried that he was actually a person suffering some delusions or mental illness, and a speech impediment that would have explained his truncated German. None of these claims could be confirmed. The most contested and popular explanation for Vorin's arrival in Germany holds that he was actually an accidental time and space traveler, which would have explained his out-of-place clothing, demeanor, and language. Jerome of Sandy Cove In 1863, an unidentifiable man washed up on the beach of Sandy Cove, Nova Scotia. He was missing both of his legs from a recent deputation. Most sources suggest the man did not understand any of the major languages, but muttered a name sounding like Jerome. He was found by an eight-year-old boy by the name of George Albright. The boy took him to his home in Digby Neck Village. When a doctor checked Jerome, he determined that the above-the-knee amputation had been probably conducted by a skilled surgeon. Still, the stumps were in the process of healing and bandaged when he was found. He showed signs of injury exposure to the elements, which made the doctor question not only where Jerome came from, but how long he had been outside. The man could not indicate his origin, but locals recalled spotting a ship of a type never before seen prior to his discovery. Villagers were eager to visit the man who appeared out of nowhere, but he often growled when people came into his room. They attempted to speak to him in French, Latin, Italian, and Spanish, aside from English, but nothing worked. Surprisingly, his hands were soft, meaning he was neither a low-level sailor nor a manual laborer. Some who met him remarked that he seemed Mediterranean. Jerome lived in near silence the rest of his days, except for one curious incident. There appears to be an account of a visit by two finely dressed women who took him in private and communicated in an unknown language. They vanished as quickly and mysteriously as they had come. Theories about his origin ran rampant. Some believe he must have been a mutinous sailor punished through amputation. Others claim he could have been a wealthy heir of a fortune cast aside for someone else to claim the money. None of these theories were ever confirmed or supported by evidence. 
Doctors linked Jerome's difficulties with speech to possible head trauma, but that theory went unconfirmed as well. <laughs> 